Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Coming at you with 1 Chronicles chapter 5, and in the middle of all the names and genealogies, there's a little something in there that can be applied to pretty much everybody. Uh, you don't have to be an ancient Israeli to get or understand these particular verses. And it is starting in chapter, I mean verse 18. 1 Chronicles chapter 5, verse 18. The sons of Reuben, the Gadites, and half the tribe of Manasseh had 44,760 valiant men, men able to bear shield and sword, to shoot with the bow, and skillful in war who went to war. They made war with the Hagrites, Jeter, Nephash, and Nodab. And they were helped against them, and the Hagrites were delivered into their hand, and all who were with them, for they cried out to God in the battle. He heeded their prayer, because they put their trust in him." And that was it, plain and simple. They were they were in a fight. They needed help. They called out to God, and because they believed in Him, He helped them. Which is I don't know. It's just you. It's kind of like there comes a point. I think probably in every Christian's life where it's like you know, is God really going to answer this prayer? Does God answer prayers really? You know, why wasn't this prayer answered? Everyone has that question. Some people have even walked away from the faith altogether because of an unanswered prayer that was really, really, really important to them. And this verse is just a reminder to me that God really does hear prayer. He really does answer prayer. When you call out to Him and you believe in Him, He really does answer. And I, can, I do have my fair share of answered prayers that I can think of off the top of my head where I've asked God for something and didn't, maybe didn't come in the exact package that I thought it would come in, but I got it. It came. It came as, maybe not exactly as I asked, but it did come as asked. And it's just like, man, that is so awesome. And this verse is a really good reminder of that. Sometimes when prayers aren't answered in the time we want, or the way we want, we can get really discouraged, and it's like, uh. And sometimes the prayers really are answered exactly as we have prayed them. Sometimes it's just like, bam, there it is. And that's really, really awesome. My only caution here would be, it's not like, okay, they're in the fight, they pray to God, and, you know, okay, so he answered them, and that's awesome. That doesn't make God a genie, and that doesn't make him a get-out-of-jail-free card. That doesn't make him your fire insurance. It's not like you can do whatever you want crap hits the fan, oh God, help me, and then he's going to answer you. According to Hebrews 11.6, God is a rewarder of those that believe in him and that believe he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You can't just you know, hope he'll hear, possibly he'll hear, live your life however you want, and then he'll hear. No, he's a rewarder of those who believe in him and believe that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You've got to believe that he exists, and you've got to believe that he will answer that prayer. Those are prerequisites. It's not you pray, he answers, and you believe. You believe in him, you believe he'll answer, and then he answers. It That's very, very counterintuitive to human nature, but faith has got to be first, not second. You don't see and then believe. You believe and then you see. And that, I think, is probably one of the key components that a lot of people whose prayers aren't answered, that's one of the things they don't get. It's something that possibly, maybe they simply didn't know. I'd like to think that was the case. And some of the cases that I'm thinking of just personally, no, it's like there were some things that were wrong with the person as well as the situation. I'm not going to reveal any details, obviously, but it's just, in just personal experience, it's like, no. Some things were wrong with the person. The prayer probably wasn't exactly prayed in a godly way. It wasn't exactly a godly prayer to begin with. Some prayers really mean a lot to people. And it's like, you know, God, why uh, why did you know my family member die of cancer? Um, why was this person gunned down? And other horrible things like that. And at times like that, when we ask for a healing and we don't get it, it's cliched as can be, but at those times we do have to believe that God, he knows best. And it is very possible that, this is, gonna, this is gonna throw a lot of people off, it's very possible that 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 sickness or that death might have been God's will. That it was time for that person to go home. 
Or conversely, if they weren't a Christian, it was time for their judgment. Their time was simply up. And in the case of some really bad sickness, it's testing time. Let's see how this person does. And God does indeed use suffering. And th th I'll say this could definitely be extended into a, a full 30-minute message. And I'm not saying anything. Several preachers haven't already said. But this verse is a reminder that some prayers do get answered directly. You ask God for it, and you get it. Yes, some prayers aren't answered, and that's a huge question. And a lot of times it boils down to the individual and the individual situation. But God does hear prayer, and God does answer prayer. That was one example of many. And it was an example of someone in the book of Chronic, or it was an example in the middle of all the genealogies of something that can be applied and used in normal, everyday lives. So, again, just encourage you to keep keep trudging through the parts of the Bible that you find a little bit boring, a little bit stale, because there are good things in there. So thank you guys very much for watching. I love you, and God bless.